This thread is about what the title means in Japanese. The term senses is rokusho, which is a Buddhist term. It refers to the six senses, eyes, ears, tongue, nose, body, and mind. The clear in this is made up of two kanji, kai and go, which means solution and enlightenment respectfully. So the first phrase feels more like a meditative or spiritual enlightenment. The second phrase is even more interesting. The first two characters in the second phrase literally translates to various aspects slash phases, which makes a lot of sense when you consider the many versions of Skarm which we've been introduced to. A prototype puppet, a wandering eccentric named Kuni Kuzushi, sixth Fatui Harbinger Skaramush, the prodigal everlasting lord of arcane wisdom. Oh, is Shoki no Kami what he refers to himself like as in the in the big puppet? The term void here is made up of two kanji, sora and mu. The first means sky and also happens to be Ether's Japanese name, but it also means empty or vacant. Taking all this together, it means a nullification of all these various existences. No more puppet. Kuni Kuzushi is dead. The Baladir defected. Shoki no Kami defeated. What's left when all that he was before is gone? Well, after some meditation and spiritual enlightenment, Wanderer. Aka hey, still a piece of shit. <laughs> Yo, that's a pretty good thread. Interesting. So I guess that's what we have to look forward to. A friendly word of advice. Vision. Test of courage events tend to give rise to a variety of strange rumors and stories. So please, be sure to exercise caution. Wait, that's Aito's voice. Ah! Jesus Christ. <laughs> How was that? Were you scared? <laughs> I hate him. <laughs> Who goes there? So, is there really a ghost around here? This is a Why this time wild. I'm that it's scaring my dad us? Are you talking to me? They really should have made this for Halloween. Jester, I have completed the task you gave me. From this day forth, Balladeer and Kabuki Mono will cease to exist. Kabuki Did you Mono? Really think you would be able to see through my plan? Dottore. All this crow imagery? <laughs> Dottore! In that case, I'll take some time for myself now. Oh my gosh, the music! Squall Fury! Oh my god, he's so cool! You dare to gaze upon me? Oh my god, I want him to yell at me like that! <laughs> The music! I like her music, it's very whimsical! Too late for regret! Have fun with this gift! Scaramouche, the mere fact of your utility does not make you indestructible. Oh my god, I can't wait to see this fight. Oh my god. Following the story's development, Scaramouche is still in Nahida's custody. So, I bet Custody? the question everyone's wanting to know is Custody? how he'll become the Wanderer. Yeah, for sure. And there's quite a story behind that. If you're interested, then be sure to play through the Archon Quest interlude chapter, Inversion of Genesis. In this interlude chapter, Nahida will task the Traveler and Paimon with keeping an eye on Skarmush while we go with him into Ermensol in search of some information. We go into oh, Ermensol? <gasps> We ran into two people at the Academia today talking about an essay. Turns out their topic was about the Tatarasuna incident. From what they were saying, it sounded like Street? lots of Tatarasuna's history is still unexplained. And most of the information we have now is just from people filling the gaps with their imagination. At least that's what they thought. Well, they guessed right about one thing. Tatarasuna was sabotaged. A Frozen's voice? It's rather pathetic to force a conversation just to occupy silence. Oh my god! 
Wait, he uses wind blades? Bow your head! Yo, that was like Tignari's burst! <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Wanderer is a catalyst user and has an animal vision, so he uses wind blades to perform ranged normal attacks. Wait a second. Yo, he's wind not blade. Hazo. Not the same as the Traveler's Windblade, though. <laughs> okay, okay. So, as everyone probably already noticed, the Wanderer can hover in the air when he casts his elemental skill. He can fly? Upon using his elemental skill, he will first deal AoE damage before leaping into the air and entering a hovering state. So, while hovering, the Wanderer's normal and charge attacks will be converted into Kugo Fushudan and Kugu Tofukai, respectively. The damage they he deal can fly. The will be increased. He can fly! Their damage Why? will be considered normal and charge attack damage, respectively. Also, Kugutofukai will not consume stamina, and he can remain hovering for a certain duration. It doesn't consume stamina! <laughs> Why? I know, I know, right? But he can't stay hovering forever. While hovering, the Wanderer constantly consumes Kuguryoku points to maintain his hovering oh, state, his which is the blue moon you system. see on the screen. Hmm. Even if he doesn't move or attack, Hovering will still consume Kugaryoku points. It's a okay. unique so hovering. This mechanic or sorry, works stamina. A little differently than our typical stamina meter. There are many possible actions the Wanderer can perform while hovering in the air, which all rely on Kugaryoku points rather than stamina. Oh. So, for example, sprinting midair will consume additional Kugaryoku points to accelerate midair. And holding the sprint button will cause persistent point consumption to maintain speed. So this effect will replace his default sprint. Jumping expends extra Kugaryoku points to increase hovering height. Holding jump will cause persistent Kugaryoku point consumption to keep increasing hovering height. Of course, running I don't out of see points it on this will end his screen. hovering state. Maybe because it's like oh, okay, so for demonstration purposes. will need to plan their actions while hovering. Exactly. So with his talent, Jade Claim Flower, when casting his elemental skill, if it contacts Hydro, Pyro, Cryo, or Electro, that instance of the skill will receive a corresponding buff effect depending on which element was contacted. Mm -hmm. uh, so for example, increasing his Kugaryoku points cap, attack, crit rate, or restoring a set amount of energy upon hitting opponents with a normal or charged attack. The Wanderer can have up to two different kinds of these buffs simultaneously. Ooh. Oh, look, 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 check that out. Oh, he's like Part an... of the halo behind him changes color depending RPG on the character. Costume. So travelers will be able to easily understand what effects the Wanderer currently has. I like that. That's a lot it's of choice. And still looks really cool. Yeah. <laughs> so after unlocking another talent, Gales of Reverie, when the Wanderer is in the hovering state, if his normal or charged attack hits an enemy, there is a set chance to gain another buff effect, allowing him to sprint midair without consuming Kugaryoku points. Additionally, this buff effect will fire wind arrows to attack the enemy. Ooh. Oh, dope. I'm sure I know how while flying. Go a long way for players when they're in combat. <laughs> yeah, for sure. And if you've noticed, there is a colorful aura of light around his body to indicate when that buff effect is triggered. I saw that. That's if pretty we... cool. I love all the detail they put into the Wanderer. All right, this brings us to the Wanderer's elemental burst. Sweet! Yay. So, oh my god, he out. actually Upon steps on you! Burst, he compresses he the atmosphere actually... and stomps it down toward the enemy. <laughs> so travelers should know actually... that if the Wanderer is in a hovering state when he unleashes his burst, then the hovering state will end and he will begin descending after the burst is completed. Okay. This stomping animation is a little aggressive. Yeah, but it's cool. <laughs> I know, and it actually suits his character. Mm hmm Yeah, I can't help but agree. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. Let's not forget about the exploration talent. Oh, God. Ah, yes. This is an interesting one. The Wanderer can decrease the mora required when ascending bows and catalysts. <laughs> what did you say? Oh, I'm old now, so every other phrase escapes my ears. Try calling me Madam Farozan, and I'll see if I can pick that up. Wow, she's so bossy, I love it. Hmm. Huh? Uh, uh, Her eyes are nice. that you would like to learn more about? Different forms of pressure-based puzzle mechanisms? The base layer design of elemental monuments? Huh. Wait, 
Did you forget to call me Madam Burrows on just now when you asked your question? Whoa! What? What? There's nothing wrong with being afraid of thunder, even at an older age. Oh my gosh, she's afraid of thunder. Oh, oh she sounds gosh. sassy. Yeah, I know. and smart too. <laughs> Baruzan works in the Academia's Haravatat Darshan and has been a Herbod, which roughly means mentor, for over a century. About a hundred years ago, Baruzan was an undisputed genius, traveling all around Sumeru and solving many puzzles and mysteries. The notes she left behind eventually became the basis of mechanical research for later generations. Whoa. Oh, she sounds pretty amazing. <laughs> but later, a she mystery. accidentally stumbled into some ruins while trying to solve a puzzle. There, she encountered some strange phenomenon which stopped her from aging and was trapped there for mm. nearly a hundred years. Ooh. She eventually solved the puzzle and was able to finally return to Sumeru. She still has the pride of a scholar in her heart and is a very talented person. It's just that after being separated from the world for so long, she's kind of fallen behind the times now. Oh, hey, I get what you mean. She was once a proud researcher in a niche field that has become unpopular after a hundred years. So is she still completely dedicated to her field? Yep, and she often tries using her old age as a means of drumming up support oh my for her God. ideas. However, I think she'd prefer to be complained about for using her seniority rather than garnering sympathy for her experience of being trapped in the ruins. Yeah, sounds like she's quite the character. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> wild. Okay, so now that we've covered her backstory, why don't we take a look at Faruzan's abilities in combat? Let's do it. Fight, fight, fight. Yeah, the fight. holes in her <laughs> skirt. I know. So scandalous. Yet there hasn't been any change to those dumb rules at the academia. Stringless looks good on her. Dare to mess with me? Ooh. Have fun with this gift. Okay. Oh. Her skill is a ball. I love all that the moves geometric between shapes enemies. She's playing. Did you guys see that? So Farzan is an animo character, and she wields a bow as her weapon. Her normal attacks are the usual bow attacks you'd expect from a bow user. So there's not too much to say about that. But her skills are where things get interesting. Her elemental skill deploys a polyhedron that deals damage to enemies. After using her skill, the her next well. aimed shot will become a special attack that creates a vortex, pulling nearby objects and opponents in. Oh, nice. More so aimed shot gameplay. Plump enemies together. And there's also another thing about her special charged attack. It will create a vortex effect at its point of impact. And if the attack hits an enemy or ally member, It'll apply a mark and create a vortex after a short delay. Okay, 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 okay. So it looks like there will be a lot of potential uses for this attack. Travelers will have to experiment with it and see what they come up with. Yeah, I think it'd be amazing to try hitting teammates with the arrow in co-op mode and have them charge into the enemies to group them all together. I'll have to see who wants huh. to try that with me. <laughs> <laughs> after unlocking the talent Impetuous Flow, the time required for fully charging Farozan's next shot will be reduced and the arrow will reduce the target enemy's animo resistance. In her elemental burst, she deploys a dazzling polyhedron Is she an enemy and releases a whirlwind pulse. Throughout its duration, the dazzling polyhedron will continuously move along a triangular path. Once it reaches each corner of that triangular path, it will unleash one more whirlwind pulse. Let's hear what effects these whirlwind pulses have. Sure! When the whirlwind pulse hits opponents, it will decrease their animo resistance. It will also apply an animo damage buff effect to all nearby party members <gasps> when it's unleashed. Travelers should note that the effective range of Shop support is quite large, and it's not just within the whirlwind pulse itself, so there's no need to go chasing the polyhedron. Please. <laughs> After unlocking her talent, Lost Wisdom of the Seven Caverns, when a team member uses normal charged or plunging attacks, elemental skills, or elemental bursts to deal animo damage to an enemy, the damage will increase based on Farazan's base attack. This effect can only be triggered once Benny? for a certain duration of time. Oh, Animal so Benny? She'll be with Saul's support. Yeah. Totally. And as a researcher of mechanics and puzzles, Farazan has taken it upon herself to explore many ruins, with her travels taking her all across Sumeru. Her exploration talent reflects this, and she gains more rewards when dispatched on a Sumeru expedition for 20 hours. So, the big question is, when can travelers expect to get these new characters? The banners? That oh, banner reveal? Question. Let's talk about the upcoming event wishes. In the early part of version 3.3, the Wanderer and okay. Arata Kito will be available via their own event wishes. 
Farazan will also be making her debut in these event wishes. Okay, so she's in on the later Scar's part banner. Of 3.3, we'll be oh? rerun event wishes for both the Raiden Shogun and Kamisato Ayato. Ayato. And last but not least, the new five-star catalyst Tule Tula's Remembrance will be appearing in a new weapon event wish. And that's not all. In version 3.3, oh, I don't know how I feel. Will become available. So two new artifacts. Be sure to check out the corresponding domain. Woo! More Woo artifacts. New right. artifacts. I hope travelers will have fun experimenting and trying new combinations with these. Another yeah. animal bonus okay. set. We've already talked about a ton of new content. And another so EM why don't we set. Take a quick break with another redemption code. Yeah, the artifact grind. Yeah. Wow. Yo, but they showed show with Frozen, so I don't know. I wonder if Hazel will be not relevant again. I mean, he's here. He's here. So next, we'll be covering the upcoming events for the new version. What is this? Aha! Uh -huh. You must be here to participate in the test of courage. I can already see a dark aura surrounding the two of you. If you carelessly go running into the event, all it'll take is one little misstep, and the darkness will swallow you up. <laughs> Some strange and unusual things may occur along the way. If you ever feel you can't handle it, you may withdraw from the event at any time. This is your last chance. I'll count it down. Three. Bro, this is spooky. Two. One. Welcome to the test of courage. Enter at your own risk. Yeah, I don't know why they didn't uh, do this for Halloween. That was pretty interesting. Word has it that if you walk around the test of courage, you might find yourself encountering a special sort of game. We've already got the rules down, so I'll do a quick introduction. To UK? Basically, travelers will have oh? to control a bouncing bar to bounce a ball and use this steel ball to make as many bricks as possible. This is Pong chat. This one seems pretty straightforward. During the game, travelers will be able to trigger elemental reactions to break bricks more effectively. <laughs> oh. Nice! It even has elemental reactions. Yeah. We can control cool. the character to move the bar. <gasps> when the you character can change the element pyro, of the ball. hydro, cryo, or electro, the corresponding element will be applied to the bar. By switching characters, you can change the element of the bar. Oh, that's okay, cool. all the pieces are falling in place now. The bar can infuse a certain element, and the blocks also have their own elements. So causing a skill oh. ball of one element to hit blocks of different elements will trigger elemental reactions. There, how'd I do? Yep, you nailed it. If a skill ball is already infused by an element and it hits the bar, it will also trigger a reaction, causing the skill ball to have some oh. additional effects. When preparing your team, you can modifiers, modifiers to see various buff effects, which will help you successfully clear the challenge. Oh, nice. Also, when there are less than a certain amount of bricks on the board and the ball lands another hit, the bar will unleash fireworks. Whoa! Fireworks! Yeah. That's cute. Travelers can utilize this effect to break some bricks that would normally be difficult to hit directly. It's oh. like a bonus attack. Oh, yeah. sweet. That's how so they travelers will need to select mitigate that. the right elements, equip the appropriate modifiers, and use different elemental reactions to break bricks and score more points. And then travelers will be able to use their points to exchange for rewards in the event shop, correct? That's right. Also, travelers will have the option of teaming up and playing the event together in co-op mode. Oh, there is co-op! Yeah, Let's go. Fun. Yeah, in addition to this minigame, the Test of Courage storyline will also contain more challenges. Storyline! will even have a chance to meet with some good friends again, so be sure to check out this new event. Okay, so next up, we have a race event called Across the Wilderness. Race event? Your objective collecting balloons Ooh. i don't know monster like event wanders abilities might come in real handy here <laughs> i know mm. right so in this event each stage will have wilderness balloons scattered all around weird christmas Travelers event i know right as many wilderness balloons as possible within the time limit to earn increasingly better rewards so during the challenge, travelers will be able to utilize their character's skills and talents. So it'll be important to assemble the right team depending on the traits and terrain of the challenge area. Oh, huh, interesting. interesting. Yeah, so travelers can also They're use adding more of these wilderness compass to obtain challenges. various buffs, which include enhanced jumping capabilities, increased movement speed, or unlimited stamina. Extension. Animal boys? However, you can only claim let's one go, buff go. during each challenge. You must consume blessed energy to use the compass and gain the selected buff. 
You may charge the compass up by finding wilderness balloons or interacting with blessed energy in the ch challenge. Or you can always wait for the compass to passively charge over time. Yo, this event looks pretty crazy. It's almost like watching parkour. Yeah. Parkour? Yeah, there are two different kinds of wilderness God. balloons in these challenges. The first is harvest balloons, which will increase the overall progress of your search for wilderness balloons. The other kind is sonar balloons, which will cause several harvest balloons to appear around you for a set amount of time. That's awesome. This is surprisingly so there will be five stages available deep. for this event, and travelers will need to consider the conditions and terrain of each stage to come up with the best way to complete it. Also, travelers may team wow, up in these co -op stages. for challenges. Ooh, more chances to more play co -op. together. I love it. Yeah, more co -op. Same. Let's go. Okay, let's move on to our next event. Everyone's favorite game of hide and seek is back with the Wind Trace, Trace is back. And of course, this is going to be another co-op event, and I for one am super excited for it. Cool. There's nothing like a good co-op. Uh, many of you might already be familiar with this event by now, but there have been a few changes. This is a game with a long history in Mondstadt. Travelers will be split <laughs> into two different sides, the Rebels and the Hunter. You will need to use skills and master the art of hiding or chasing down others to win this event. The goal of the hunter is to capture all the rebels, while the rebels run or use other Man, means the to stages keep themselves from getting so caught small. By the okay, that's straightforward enough. Some travelers may remember playing as the rebels and getting caught early in the game. Once that would happen, all you could do was spectate and watch the rest as the others continue playing. But oh? this time around, once you're caught, you'll still be able to participate in the match even in observer mode. This is a good change. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Once you're in observer mode, you can't be seen by other players and will receive the illusory beacon skill. This skill will allow you to place a random beacon oh. to confuse the hunter. If your beacon successfully tricks the hunter and is destroyed, then the hunter will suffer an obscured vision effect. And so, so chaos. Even after you've been captured, you can be like a little ghost trying to help your teammates by disrupting the hunter. This is good, hunter. this is good. That's pretty fun. But what does the hunter get this time? I mean, we gotta keep oh. it fair. Some new windward arts Content? added for both the hunter and the rebels. The hunter will now be able to use the hunter's net. This net A can be net? thrown and will remove any rebel disguises within its range and will notify the hunter that a rebel was detected. Oh. If a beacon is caught in the net, it will be destroyed and the hunter will not suffer from obscured vision. Nice. So oh, I guess if you love okay. playing hunter, that you'll probably love this. Fair. Oh yeah, you definitely should. <laughs> the skill rebels used in previous versions of the game to place beacons can now only be used by players in observer mode. However, the rebels will be able to use an all new concealing beacon skill. Aww. This skill will allow you to deploy a beacon for a set duration and remain invisible while you're around that beacon. All players, including your rebel teammates, will be unable to see you while you're invisible. If the concealing beacon is destroyed by the hunter, then the hunter will have their vision obscured for a short oh. time. Sounds pretty fun, huh? Yeah. 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 Wow, they completely so even if changed. You end up being captured by the hunter at the start of the game, you'll still be able to participate and assist your teammates. And they completely changed the how it works. No gems and other rewards. Ah, the good stuff. So be <laughs> sure to check it out. A new edition of Misty Dungeon will arrive in version 3.3. Mm. There will be a total of seven trials with different themes awaiting you in the Misty Dungeon. Each has a different ley line disorder, and travelers will have to adjust their teams according to the disorder's effects and the distribution of enemies. There will also be trial characters for you to select from as well. After entering the domain, travelers will need to go and complete three challenges to collect ancient runes. After collecting power from three mm. ancient runes, we can power up the control array and proceed to the final challenge. Also, throughout the trial, additional benediction mechanisms and challenges will appear. Travelers may choose to interact with these to increase the ley line disorder's effects or revive and heal your team. You know, uh, if it were up to me, I'd say just go for all the challenges. <laughs> of course know, you would. Travelers should keep in mind that the challenge objective for each trial might be different. So be sure to check the objective and aim for that while proceeding. In terms of rewards, travelers can look forward to winning Primo Gems and other various prizes. And last but not least, version 3.3 will also have Leyline? Leyline Overflow events. Let's travelers go. Can look forward to saving their resin and earning more. The real event books. to look forward to. <laughs> That's awesome. Uh, that'll be great for all the travelers out there still leveling up all their new characters. 
And even if you don't <sighs> need those resources now, it's always good to stock up and have more on hand, am I right? Yeah. The time to farm books. So travelers looking to upgrade their characters won't want to miss this. <laughs> Version 3.3 will also be added a new permanent game mode called Genius Invocation TCG. The trading card game. TCG. <laughs> <laughs> During our journey into that, we've stumbled across several NPCs talking about a game called Genius Invocation TCG. So next, we'll introduce this card game that's been taking to bat by storm. In the version 3.1 special program, we already revealed that Genius Invocation TCG will be a card game where we can challenge various characters and NPCs or battle against your friends. Ooh. But there is actually a legend behind this game. A legend? It is said that a young guy in Sumeru found an ancient casket of tomes in the attic. He opened it and discovered that the soul of an ancient TCG player called the Crocodile King had been captured inside. <laughs> Crocodile King? It turns out that the Crocodile King was King Deshret's viceroy, who battled an opponent named the Ibis King. Huh. During the match, the Crocodile King fell prey to his opponent's scheme and was sealed away in the casket of tomes. <laughs> Ouch, game over. After being unexpectedly released, King K. Rule, the Crocodile King possesses him and helps him to gradually climb the ranks to becoming a legendary TCG player. <laughs> nice. Hang on, is it just me or does that kind of sound like the plot to a light novel or something? <laughs> Yo, this, right. this is wild. It turns out that Yai Publishing House is about to release a hit light novel series based on Genius Invocation TCG. Okay, now this is starting to sound like a plug for Yai Publishing House. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe. <laughs> but anyway, that's the legend on how Genius Invocation TCG came to be. So while you were telling us about the story, I was over here researching the rules to the game. Basically, Genius this guy Invocation calls a rookie. TCG is a game where you use a constructed deck of cards to duel against an opponent. The objective Ooh. is to defeat all of your opponent's character cards. That's right. Also, Wait, there are bro, many this features is... and mechanics in the game that resonate with Genshin Impact's gameplay, so it shouldn't be too hard for players to is get this the hang not of. Right, Hearthstone? I even saw some elemental reactions in the gameplay. Yup, it is animated. Deck must contain character cards, and as you might expect, these character cards have a normal attack, an elemental skill, and an elemental burst. <sighs> so when a character card deals elemental damage to an enemy, it will cause them to be affected by that element. Then you can switch to a character card of a different element and use their abilities to trigger an elemental reaction. Wait, did you guys notice that there are even monster character cards? Can we even make a deck of, like, just the monsters from the game? <laughs> just the You're monster. really getting into this, Max. <laughs> yeah, I am. <laughs> I like card games. Who no, this does it? look really, really cool. <laughs> so in Genius Invocation TCG, all actions require you to spend elemental dice. Each round, elemental both you and dice. your opponent will roll eight elemental dice. Hold on, but there's only seven elements in the world of Tevat. You're right. So, in addition to the seven standard elements, there's oh? also one called the Omni element. The elemental Omni dice required for a element. character card to perform an action correspond to the character's element. So, for example, a Pyro character like Diluc needs either Pyro or Omni elemental dice to perform an action. Clear now? Yep, crystal huh. clear. Also, elemental dice can be used to switch characters or play a variety of other cards such as equipment cards, event cards, and support cards. All these cards create the potential for a variety of strategies. Right. While playing Genius Invocation huh. TCG, travelers can earn player experience, which will increase your player level. As your level increases, you'll be able to challenge more characters and NPCs. By completing challenges, you may earn lucky coins, new cards, or other rewards. Lucky coins can be exchanged in the event but shop there for is... cards, Progression. Or can even unlock dynamic skins for certain cards. Dynamic skins? Th those are cards. Skins that for cards, right? But not for characters. All character cards can unlock a dynamic skin. After unlocking, oh that, my god, will even be a cool bonus animation whenever you cast that character's elemental burst. Cool. And if you're confident in your TCG skills, you can also invite a friend to duel. After reaching a high enough player level, you'll even unlock a matchmaking mode. So, matchmaking sure mode. Travelers should note that playing against your friends or other travelers won't count towards any leaderboards or provide any rewards. So, you can relax. It's all just for fun. 
<laughs> okay, uh, sigh of relief. everything we have for Genius Invocation TCG, and that brings us to the end of today's special program. Oh. That was pretty good. That was short. Yeah, I am very surprised that there is no new area. Like, I'm really wondering what they're waiting for. The events look really, really cool. I'm excited for the TCG as well, although I think, like, in order for me to fully get hyped about it, I have to play it first and try it out for myself. Yeah, my wallet is nowhere to be found because I really want Scaramouche. <laughs>